Hey guys, I'm Dr. Bree, Doctor of Physical Therapy and founder of Femme Fusion Fitness, your home for pelvic floor and core friendly fitness and yoga. And today I'm going to be doing a FOGA routine, fitness and yoga, that is really all about strengthening and stretching the muscles of the hips and, and pelvic area. And this is really intended actually specifically for people who may have a history of sacroiliac joint issues, discomfort or pain. It can even be helpful for people who have a history of sciatica too. Now, if you're in an acute time of discomfort from SIJ instability or sciatica, then this may not be for you. But if you, again, have a history of this and you need to have a routine that really helps to stretch all of the muscles around the anterior abdominal wall, the side hips, the back hips, everywhere through here, and also stabilize the muscles of the pelvis, then I think you're really gonna like this routine. So let's go ahead and get started. You won't need any equipment except a yoga mat, maybe some blocks, uh, maybe a strap handy if you want it. And uh, let's get going. We're gonna begin on our backs, lying down with our knees together, feet apart. Okay, come on down through your side onto your back. And like I said, we're gonna begin with our feet apart. So as wide or maybe even a little wider than your yoga mat and then drop your knees together. And we are going to be doing some strengthening and stretching in this routine. You are gonna get a little bit of a workout, so please just take this time to kind of relax and sink into the mat. Don't worry, there is work coming ahead. So many of us really just wanna push it out. But it's important to come into the moment and rest and release and feel into your body before you get started. And I really love the way this particular stretch with my knees together and my feet apart feels on the back of my pelvis and the sacroiliac joint area, which is the area where the big pelvic ilium bones meet the sacrum. So again, just take some deep breaths. Feel like the whole back side of your body is really sinking down into the ground. Feel that opening in the back of your pelvis, evenly between the two sides. One more deep breath. And now heel toe your feet together so that your feet are underneath your knees. And engage your pelvic floor, pull in your low belly and bring one knee up and then the other. You can help the other up with your hand if you'd like. Hands down on the floor at your sides. Strong through that core, don't let your low back arch. Pull your lower ribs in, knit them together. Don't let the, them thrust upward toward the ceiling. So strong through the core as we drop one foot at a time onto the ground. Keep your breath flowing. You wanna exhale. I like to exhale as I bring my leg up. Cause to me, that's the part that's harder. When I bring the leg up, ooh, that's when I'm really having to work. So exhale as you bring the leg up. Try to make sure that your neck isn't getting really tense. Your shoulders drop down away from your ears. Your neck is relaxed. And bring the attention and the awareness to your core, right here and here. Your deep abs, they should be feeling this. The transversus abdominis is stabilizing your pelvis and your core against your moving legs right now. Your legs are moving and your TA, your deep abs, your transversus abdominis, is stabilizing the core and the spine. Take it even slower. Slowing it down makes you feel it more. Now, yes, we're working on SIJ and pelvic stability, but it's part of your core, and so we have to work the abs, the back, the hips, everything to really be getting the best workout. 
Okay, one more on each side. And now, gently bring both knees to chest, and then hug your right knee in, left leg goes long. So still strong through the core, make sure that this isn't happening with your low back. You want to be lifted through the pelvic floor and low belly, low ribs pull in, dropping down, and exhale as we switch, and switch. So this is providing a little bit of a pull on one side versus the other. But you should be so stable and strong through your core that it's not creating a torque or a torsion that would aggravate your SIJ issues if you have problems in the sacroiliac joints. Of course, at any time, if anything hurts or is uncomfortable, like in a very bad way, not just a muscles working way, then don't do it. Please stop. And if you ever have any questions, or concerns related to your needs, always talk to your healthcare provider. Keep your low belly pulled in, keep breathing, and let's do five more. Five, four, three, Two, exhaling every time you pull your knee in. Short, sharp exhales. One, and done. Okay, Whew. pull the knees in. Just rock it gently. Very gently, stretching out the back. And let's place both feet on the ground. Ah. Hands on the ground. Roll your shoulders underneath your back and roll up one vertebrae at a time into a bridge. Hold it here, squeeze the bottom, lift. Hold it here. One more breath in and out. Relaxed through the neck. Shoulders down away from your ears and roll it down one vertebrae at a time. And then release your knees side to side, rock side to side. Deep belly breath in and out. and then bring your knees together. And we're just being real basic with this now. 10 bridges, 10 basic simple bridges. Again, nice position here with your shoulders down away from your ears, shoulder blades on the floor, hands on the floor, and roll it up and down. Press into your heels as you lift your hips up toward the ceiling. This is number three and we're going to 10. Breathe steadily, this is four. Keep your knees in line over your heels. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's actually hold number 10 up. Hold it up. And now walk your arms even more underneath you. And if you can, clasp your hands underneath your bum. So hands are on the ground. This is great for stretching out the front of the hips and the front of the abs. One more deep breath in and out. Release your neck and then release your hands and roll down one vertebrae at a time. Oh, hug your knees into your chest. But before we really pull them in, I want you to actually decompress your spine by pressing your knees outward against your hands. So press into your hands, press, 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 and then pull them in. Oh, it feels so good. So hug the knees in. Maybe you can just hold on behind your thighs and that's okay too. Whatever feels good to you on your thighs or around your shins. Okay, let's go ahead and get ready to stand up. So one more little hug and then we're gonna stand up. Roll to your side first and come up into a standing position. We're gonna begin by with this, some strengtheners. So we're gonna strengthen those outer hip muscles with some hip hikes. So zip up your core nice and strong through your core. Lift your leg that's closer to the wall and have a wall or something to hold on to lightly for support. So you're gonna let this hip drop out to the side. Now 20 times we're gonna pull it back in. Use your side hip muscles 
to make your pelvis go unlevel and then level your pelvis by using these side hip muscles. So it's not the abs, it's these side hip muscles that are actually doing the work. So I'm gonna show you, we've done two, let's do three, straight out to the side, and then use those side hip muscles to draw your pelvis level. Let's do four. Five. Six. Maybe you can do this without holding onto the wall. And maybe you can make your pelvis even more than level. You can actually lift the bent leg hip up a little higher. So let it go down and then maybe you can really get that other hip up even more, really squeezing these side hip muscles and then let's drop it again. Now, if this feels like it's irritating to your pelvis or your sacroiliac joints at all, then definitely hold on to something and maybe don't do all 20, just stop. If this is irritating to you, then don't continue. Take a break, do some little hip circles or just fast forward to the next exercise. So nice and slow. You should feel this all the way down the leg. Strong through the core. Make sure your arch is lifted on the standing leg foot. You're not collapsing through the midline of the leg or the arch. Your toes are spread nice and wide. And last one. Okay, shake it out. Before we move on to the other side, we're gonna do a nice little stretch. So, feet together, you're gonna just stretch, jut your hips out to the side that was working. So for me, that was this side. Jut the hips out and stretch your body away from it. Come up as you breathe in and then wrap that leg behind. So the same side leg we were just stretching, wrap it behind and lean away from that leg. So feel that you're doing a straight side bend. Try not to lean forward. You're going straight to the side. Heart and chest are open. and come on up. All right, shake out the leg, and we're gonna do the same hip hiking on the other side. So, holding onto the wall, now the leg that was just working is now bent up, and now I'm gonna work the other leg. So hip goes out to the side, straight out to the side. Use those side hip muscles to level out your pelvis. It was dropped, now we're using the side hip muscles to level out the pelvis. Drop and level out the pelvis. I'll show you from the front. Drop and level out the pelvis. So strong and engaged through the core, keep going. Again, making sure that your arch is lifted and your toes are spread nice and wide on that standing leg. This is definitely challenging the side hip muscles. If it feels like it's too much on your sacroiliac joint, like I said, take a break, take a breather, do some hip circles if you need to. But otherwise, keep going with me. This is wonderful for overall pelvic stability and core stability and strength. going. Strong through the core. Couple more. Last one. Okay, so same thing. Feet together. Take a deep breath in, shut the hips out to the side that you were just working. So for me, that's this side here, and lean straight to the side. Inhale, come up, and then step that leg that was just working behind the other one, 
and lean straight over. You can jut that hip out a little bit. Really working, stretching that side hip area. Open your heart and your chest. One more deep breath. And then come on up. Okay, shake out the legs. And we're gonna move into a nice wide-legged position. So real wide legs, toes point out, come down into a deep goddess squat. Now feel that your knees are not coming in. We wanna open them. So nice open hips right here. And you're going to also make sure that you're not leaning forward like this. You wanna really be sinking straight down as much as you can. Lifted through the pelvic floor, long through the spine. Now, well, what I want you to do is put your hands on your thighs and you can play with hand position here, but hands on the thighs, not the knee joints. And we're going to think about dropping the left shoulder down and twisting just gently to the right. Opening the hips and you can move with this. Always feel free to move in your stretches. And to see I had to just shift my hand around a little bit. Do what feels good to you. Take some deep breaths, trying to straighten this left arm and my right arm is bent. Opening the hips. Now come up through the midline, straighten the legs just for a rest, and then come back down and same exact thing going the other way. So feel that you're really sitting back now, you are sitting back, and you're stretching the glute muscles evenly on both sides. So not one side more than the other. It's a nice even stretch. Inhale and exhale one more time. And now come up, straighten the legs just for a moment, toes out, roll your shoulders, and then let's now bring toes forward, heels out. So your heels are slightly out of your toes. Now you're gonna lift strong through your core and you're gonna come forward into a forward fold. Now for this, you might want blocks underneath your hands or they can be right where they're at on the floor, fingertips on the floor. I want you to wiggle into this and really feel a stretch in your butt cheeks, your glutes, and feel that nice even stretch between the two sides so that your sacroiliac joints are nice and evenly stretched and you're feeling the muscles around the sacroiliac joints nice and evenly activated. Again, toes are slightly in, heels are slightly out. Now holding this position here, I want you to place your right arm underneath, right hand close to underneath your chest. Your left hand is gonna go up onto your hip. Now you can just stay right here or you can be in slightly engaged through your core. Inhale, heart goes forward, and exhale, gentle twist to the left, but you don't wanna to go too much. You don't want torsion or anything that's too intense on your sacroiliac joints, causing them to be out of balance. So just stay here. Now, if you don't have sacroiliac joint issues, then you can bring your arm up overhead. You can even bring your hand all the way around and put your hands in your right hip crease and just make sure that your pelvis is staying level and it's not going off to the side. You can self-adjust by pulling your right hand into your right hip crease and making sure that your pelvis is staying nice and level. So any of these are options. Just choose what feels good for your body. I'm gonna bring my hand back to my hip. I'm looking to the left or you can look down. And now both hands down, bend your knees, toes out once again, and let's just round it up one vertebra at a time and roll those shoulders back. Okay, same exact thing on the other side. So, heel slightly in, toes slightly out. We're gonna come forward. Left hand on the ground underneath your chest. Strong through the core, heart goes forward and bring your hand on to, right hand onto the right hip. So again, just stay here, that's absolutely fine. Or you can slightly twist your trunk 
but try not to let your pelvis go with you. You want to keep your pelvis really shooting back toward the back wall. You don't want to be leaning into the back wall like this, but you want to be keeping your sit bones shining toward that back wall, not off kilter. Now, you should feel that nice even stretch going backwards, but if you want more and you don't have any problems with your sacroiliac joints and it feels good, engage your core and lift that right arm up toward the ceiling. You can also wrap the arm around you and put your hand in your left hip crease and self-adjust so that your pelvis is not going all cattywampus. You can actually keep your pelvis level by self-adjusting here at your hip. Breathe deeply. Look side to the right or look down. Now I'm gonna bring my hand back to my side. Inhale and last exhale, we go down. Now, before we stand up, I wanna do a strengthener. So crawl your hands forward and just sit your hips back a tiny bit. Not a lot, but a tiny bit. See if you can reach your hips back. There can be a slight micro bend in the knees. They don't have to be locked out. They can be micro bent, but try to sit your bum back. This is a lot of work for the back and a big stretch for the pelvis and the, and the hip muscles. Now if you're okay here, hold it for one more breath. And now bring your weight more square onto your feet again, so not so much sitting back. Hold it here, strong core, and lift one arm up, and then down, and then the other arm up, and then down, and then maybe soft knees, both arms up, strong through the back, and down. My knees are soft, they're softly bent. One more time, inhale, arms lift up and down. Now, heel toe the feet together. That was a lot of work for our back. Bend the knees deeply, roll it up one vertebrae at a time. Super slow. Now, roll the shoulders back. We're gonna move into some chair poses. Chair poses are, the chair pose is great for working the entire core, but especially stabilizing the pelvis. So sitting back, your feet and your knees are even distance apart. So you don't want your knees knocking together, nor do you want them out to the side. So nice and lifted through both arches. Sit back like you're sitting back into a chair. Make your spine long from the tailbone to the crown of the head. So no tucking under and no arching like this. Long spine, pelvic floor and abs are engaged, and hold it. Be sitting so far back that you can lift your tiptoes off the ground. One more deep breath in and out. Now fold forward, arms go behind you. Now inhale, arms up and exhale, arms back. <sighs> Inhale, arms up. Feel the activation, exhale, arms back. Feel the activation in your glutes and your back muscles as you do this, smooth and flowing, back and forth. <sighs> exhale, back. <sighs> One more time, inhale, up. Exhale, back. <sighs> okay. Hands down on the ground, bend one knee, so my right knee is bent, left leg is straight, and then bend the other knee. Now you can absolutely grab some blocks, because we are gonna do a forward fold right now, so take the time to grab some blocks if you need them. Bend one more time on each side, and then the other. And the knees can have a slight micro bend if needed, but try to work toward exhaling, hollow out your belly, really bring your belly so it's like it's laying on your thighs. You want your belly to lay on your thighs, knees can be bent. And try to, in this position, nice and relaxed, inhale, straighten your spine, heart forward, and exhale, straighten your legs. 
Let your head be heavy. Maybe walk out your feet just a little bit if they were too narrow, too close together. Relax. Maybe put your hands like this, crossed, and you can just ragdoll fold. You could rock. Exhale, hands down, bend your knees, come down onto your knees, and we're going to do a little bit of a cat-cow here. We're going to finish up with some seated poses. One cat-cow. And now, let's go ahead and bring your right leg around your left. So your right leg is in front of your left. Think about suctioning all the air out from between your legs. Now what I want you to do is just rock back just a little bit. So again, all of the air is suctioned out from between my knees. My feet are out to the sides and I'm just rocking back. This is a preparation for coming all the way back into this pose right here, okay? This knees piled one on top of the other. This is not necessarily something you need to get to today. So you can just continue rocking back like this. Now if you want to try moving into that full expression of the pose, you can. You can also grab a block and put it behind you so that you, when you come down, you're actually going to end up sitting on the block. So play with this a little bit longer. If you are just playing and rocking back and forward, that's totally fine, keep going. If you want to sit all the way back into the, this pose right here, the full expression of the pose, go for it. The key is you want to keep your ankles flexed so you protect your knees, and you want to really have one knee stacked on top of the other with no real space between them as much as you can. So if you're in this pose, I want you to inhale, lift your spine, my left leg is actually under my right. My left leg is under my right. I'm going to say that again. So I'm bringing my right arm under my left. So my right leg is on top. My right arm is underneath. And this is the full pose right here. If this feels too much for your SIJ, if this is too much for your sacroiliac joints and they feel like this is causing torsion, this is creating them to be off kilter, this is causing something that you don't like, then please carefully unwrap yourself, get out of this pose. Everyone is different. For some people, this is going to feel great on their sacroiliac joints and their pelvic joints. For others, not so much. So listen to your body. You are your own guru. Try to keep both sitting bones grounded equally onto the mat. Lift your forearms up toward the sky. One more deep breath in and out. And then hands down. Release your shoulder by dropping your head away from your outstretched arm. And then go the other way. Release the legs if you hadn't already. Drop the legs side to side, little windshield wiper stretch, and we're gonna do the same pose on the other side. So before, my right leg was on top. My right leg was on top like this, and I sat back. Now, my left leg is gonna go in front of my right. So left leg in front of the right, Here's how it looks from the front. And try to squeeze out all the air from between your knees. And no matter what level you're at, you can just rock back. Just rock back and forth and feel that nice, easy rocking, stretching motion. That should feel pretty good for most everyone. Now, if you wanted to experiment with either sitting on a block behind you or sitting all the way back onto the mat, now is the time to do that. 
Again, you can absolutely sit on a block. You want to walk your feet so that your feet are basically in line with one another. And flex at the ankles to protect your knees. So knee stacked on top of the other. My left leg is now on top of my right. So I'm going to bring my arms out to the side and my left arm is going to go underneath my right. Left leg on top, left arm underneath. Wrapping around, eagle arms. And we lift up and down. Now this arm is optional. You can absolutely have your hands just down at your sides as well. Like I said, everyone is different. This may not feel good for you if you have SIJ issues. It might also feel harder on one side than the other, and that's normal too. It's, it's not something we want. We want both sides to be the same pretty much, but if it, if it feels different, then don't worry, you're not alone. It's that way for most people, that one side feels a lot different than the other. So just work with it, work with your body. Lift those forearms up toward the ceiling if you are in this position. Try not to let your low back arch and your ribs flare up. You wanna pull everything in. Keep both sitting bones on the ground. And now hands behind you, unwrap your arms. Carefully, slowly unwrap your legs if they were wrapped. Let your knees flop around a little bit. Windshield wiper side to side. Maybe you can go a little deeper. Maybe you can't. Maybe again, going deeper causes too much torsion, too much twisting on your sacroiliac joints. And that's okay. Listen to your body. All right. Come on through your side. And we are going to finish up with one more round of what, exactly what we started with. So those core stabilizing moves. So we're gonna bring in your legs, one knee at a time, belly button pulls to your spine, your pelvic floor is lifted, you're nice and zipped up, and we go. Prancing down and up, breathing steadily. Down and up, down and up. Shoulders down away from your ears. Do not let your low ribs pop up. We want to pull them in. Low belly is pulled in. Everything is strong and stable through the core. We're just sealing in the practice here. Seal in the practice with some nice core stability. You should really be feeling this. Last one. Now, pull the knees in and then press out. Press, 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 press. And pull it in. We're gonna skip the long single leg to chest and other leg extends. We're gonna skip that one and go straight into a bridge and just do 10 reps. So lift and lower. Lift, pressing into the feet and heels, and lower. If I counted right, we have five more to get to 10. Four more. Three. Two, and we're gonna just like before, hold the last one, hold it. I know it's a lot of work. Walk those shoulders underneath you, clasp your hands under your bottom, lift, 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 and carefully release. Oh, one vertebrae at a time. Hug those knees into your chest, little gentle hug in, press out against your hands, press, 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 hug it in. Rock it. Maybe you're holding on behind your thighs. Maybe you're holding on around your shins. Either way is fine. Deep belly breath. Maybe rock side to side. We're gonna end with happy baby and then shavasana. So 
Grab with your peace fingers around your toes or around the outside of your feet and try to straighten your feet up toward the ceiling. Your knees are bent, but your feet are heading up toward the ceiling like they're gonna stamp on the ceiling. Hold down so you're lengthening, your, feel like you're laying your spine along the ground, lengthening your tailbone toward the floor. And again, pressing the feet up toward the ceiling. It should feel really decompressing for your back and also really um, great for your shoulders too. Maybe rock a little side to side. Last deep breath. And now very carefully bend, release your legs. Hold it here for just a minute. Then release your feet toward the ground. Straighten out one leg and then the other. And just lie in a nice relaxed Savasana at the end of our class. Please do not stop the video right now. You've stayed with me this whole time. If you're still here, you did a great job. Please stay here for at least three or four breaths and just feel your body sinking down into the mat. Feel the back of your head, the back of your shoulders, the back of your pelvis, your calves, your heels, all heavy into the ground. One more deep breath, really breathing into the pelvic floor and pausing. And then exhaling all the air out and pausing. Roll onto your side. And then on an exhale, press yourself up into a seated position. And please know that you can always hold those resting poses at the end longer than I do. It's actually a very good idea to hold it for a lot longer than I do, five or even 10 minutes. But this is a good start for today. So I hope this really helps you if you have any sacroiliac joint discomfort uh, or issues with sciatica. Again, always listen to your body and do what feels right for you and your needs at this time. If you liked this video and it's helped you, please subscribe to my channel, share it with a friend. I have new videos every week. And also check out my new program, Booty Glute Camp. I have a downloadable bundle that would be really great for you if you do have pelvic instability issues. It strengthens all of the muscles around the pelvic area. So great program for you to look into. I'll put the information in the information bar and the video notes uh, below. Thanks again for watching, and as always remember, eat clean, move every day, and you will shine brighter. I'll see you next time.